Good evening, Parkview family. It's our first video service in uh, this uh, coronavirus age that we're living in. A um, couple things as we get started tonight. Uh, let us know you're there by just saying hi, just saying hi to us or uh, type that you're watching just so we know that you're with us. Second thing, if you don't mind, if you'll just go ahead and hit share so anybody that maybe forgot uh, we'll have an opportunity to jump on there and you'll see your share and it'll uh, spark their memory. Also, your friends and neighbors and folks like that and uh, family members that uh, you may want to watch tonight. So a couple things as we get started um, that I just want to cover and then before, right before we go to the scriptures. First, um, if you do not have the Parkview app, there's a couple ways you can get that. If you have an Android device, you can go to the Google Play Store, Apple device, you can go to the App Store in Apple, and you can look, uh, search Parkview Church of God, and you'll see there our logo, and that's how you'll know that you've got the right place. You can download that. That's important for a couple of reasons. One, uh, you can submit prayer requests through that, as well as just make a comment there in the uh, comment section on Facebook. Also, when it comes time to give, you can give through the app as well. And so we'll talk about giving in just a second. But uh, some of you may not have the app downloaded. Some of you may not even know we have an app. In fact, I was talking to uh, one of our church members today, and they're like, I don't think I have the app downloaded. So I walked them through the process, and they downloaded the app. So if you don't have the Parkview app, you can get to the website, which will lead you to the Facebook page. There's comments. There's also a connection card on the app. Under the uh, Connect tab, you can go there, and then it'll have connection card and prayer requests is there too, and then Facebook link, I believe. And so uh, you can actually fill out the connection card on the app. So uh, if you haven't done that, maybe this is a good time to think about that, and uh, you can download the app on your smartphone. Next, let me just say, once again, just remind you, if you'd like to give tonight, we have several ways for you to give. First of all, you can give through the website. Just click on the Giving tab, Online Giving. That'll lead you to Push Pay. You can uh, give your offering there, um, or you can text P-C-O-G to 77977. That, that'll get you to Push Pay through your smartphone without going to the website. Also, once again, you can pay through the app. That's why I mentioned that there just a second. Uh, we're so glad that we can visit together, even though it's not the normal setting, even though we're in a, a situation where it's all online. It's a little bit different for me. It's a little bit different for you. And I've just uh, been asking the Lord to just help us to have a good service tonight, good Bible studies. We just remind ourselves of some of the things that God has given to us in his word. And so as we get started tonight, I just want us to pause and I want us to pray. And uh, I want us to pray for a couple of things. Uh, we want to pray for those who are sick. Uh, even in our area, there are people who have contracted the virus, but also in our country and, of course, around the world. It's a pandemic. We all know that. So there are people that are sick and suffering. There's also people that are grieving. They've lost family members through this pandemic. And uh, we just want to pray for those families. We also want to pray for our leadership. Our national leaders, our president and the congressional leaders, we want to pray for our state leaders. We also want to pray for our local leaders and ask God to direct them as they lead uh, us through this crisis, this situation that is uh, certainly in our time unprecedented, um, something we've not seen and not anything I've seen in my lifetime. Some of you who may have uh, endured uh, maybe World War II or been in the United States during great war times when the whole world was at war. There was different things that happened in those ages. But in my lifetime, 51 years, that's right, I know I don't look 50, um, but I am. And uh, in 51 years, I can't remember things being shut down like they are. So let's pray for our leaders. We also want to pray for healthcare workers. We want to pray for those on the front line helping people with this virus, this sickness. And uh, we want to ask God just to give them strength because they have their own families, their own situations, personal lives, but they're also leading in the healthcare industry to try to minister to people uh, medicine and healing and, and try to help people to recover through this disease. Let's pray for them. Also, let's pray for uh, those who are hit financially. People are out of work. Some people are getting paid through these times. Some are not. I think of people like waitresses who work on tips and those kind of things and small businesses. And, and so there's people that are hurting 
uh, other ways than just physically, but they're hurting financially. So let's pray for them tonight. We also want to pray for you. And uh, if you have prayer requests, if you'll put them in the comment section, as soon as we go offline, we'll pray for them tonight. We'll ask God just to, to take your request and just minister to your needs. So if you just put those in the comment section, that'll be a great blessing to us. If you'll just join me right there in your living room, around your kitchen table, wherever you're at, maybe your car, uh, let's just pause and pray. Now, if you're in your car, you don't have to close your eyes. Uh, but let's just pray and ask the Lord to bless us tonight. Father, we come tonight in the name of Jesus, and uh, we are in uh, a time that is filled with just different circumstances than most of us have ever faced. And Lord, in those times, we need to remind ourselves that our help and strength and hope comes from you. And so, Lord, we're asking you to help us tonight, asking you to minister to us. I pray, Lord, that you would just uh, work through this situation. Lord, we know for certain that this virus did not take you by surprise. Lord, you are in control. You are sovereign. You reign. And so, Lord, I'm asking God, as you are still on the throne, we're asking for your help and strength. We pray for those who are sick and suffering. Pray that you administer healing to them. We pray that there would be uh, an increase in the recovery rate, God. We pray that the death rate would go down. Lord, we're asking that you would heal people miraculously of this virus, God. We also pray for those who are grieving because of this virus, whose loved ones have lost their life, God. We pray for those families. We ask, God, that you would move upon them with your power, your grace, your Holy Spirit. And God, that you would just work in them supernaturally. Lord, I also want to pray for our leaders tonight. We pray for our president, our congressional leaders. We pray for our governors. We pray for our local leaders. Lord, we pray that in the name of Jesus, you would continue to give everyone wisdom. That, God, you would just let them have wisdom from above. Now, I know they're surrounded with a lot of smart people. But, God, there is no wisdom like the wisdom that comes down from heaven. So, Lord, we pray for them tonight. We ask, God, that you would minister, bring your wisdom into those meeting rooms, those situation rooms, God, and into those decisions. And, Lord, we pray that you would touch them. We pray for those on the front line helping those to recover, the health care workers. We pray, God, that you would move upon them, minister to them, help them. We ask, God, that you would uh, protect them from contracting the virus, but also, Lord, that you would touch them as they're ministering to others. God, some of them are overworked. They've been working endless shifts, God, without any days off. Lord, we pray for them. We ask, God, that you would help them. Hospitals are, in some places are being overrun with people with the sickness. God, we pray in the name of Jesus you would touch those folks that, um, that are on the front lines. We pray for those who have suffered financially because of this. Businesses have closed. Lord, families are, are on the brink. Some of them that live paycheck to paycheck, God, they're... They're in situations where they're beginning to think about how they're going to keep the lights on, how they're, going to, how they're going to have some food, how they're going to take care of just daily necessities. God, we pray that you would minister. I know there are things that work throughout, the, throughout government systems, but God, we also pray that you would help. God, help the church to rise up in this moment, all of our food pantries, all of our food ministries. Uh, God, that you would just help us to just be on that front line helping people, ministering to people, God. We pray that in the name of Jesus that you would minister. Now, Lord, we pray tonight that you would just touch us as we gather around screens instead of in sanctuaries. We gather around computer screens or cell phones or tablets and study your word. I pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to us. I pray that you would encourage us in the middle of this crisis. I pray that you would help us to understand and to always remember that, God, you have our answers and that you are our hope. God, we pray that in the name of Jesus, you would move upon us supernaturally tonight. May your word find good ground in our hearts. And, Lord, may we, may we gain strength. Now, Lord, just as we close this prayer, I pray a bold prayer. I pray, God, that you would stop this virus. Lord, that you would intervene. I read in the scripture that there is nothing too hard for you. And God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, you, you would turn this whole situation around. And God, that you would stop the spread miraculously. I also pray that God, in the midst of this, in the midst of the crisis, 
and in the midst of the recovery to come. That there would be a work of the Holy Spirit around the world that would literally blow our minds. That the work of God, the Word of God, the work of the Holy Spirit would spread faster than the virus. God, we pray for a mighty move of your Spirit. God, we're asking that you would take what seems to be so bad and God, that you would bring revival through it. Now, Lord, we ask you all of these things in faith, knowing, God, that you're able to do them. So, Lord, we thank you in advance. I pray for your people that are watching and are putting their request in the comment section. Lord, I pray for those needs, and we'll pray for those again in a second, Lord. Lord, touch us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, tonight, I just felt like the Holy Spirit led me to encouragement. We've been talking about here at Parkview, uh, not to fear. We've talked about that for the past couple of weeks. We've talked about how God's in control. I just felt like tonight, once again, that the Holy Spirit just laid on my heart to encourage all of us watching and gathered around uh, tonight for Bible study that we would just remember that God wants to encourage us. We are in a time that is unlike anything most of us have ever seen. And sometimes when we go into difficult situations, if we're not careful, our human nature will begin to kick in and we'll actually forget some things that we know. We'll forget that uh, God is sovereign and that he's in control. We'll forget that he cares. We'll forget that he has the answer. We'll forget sometimes of how great his power is. Not that we lose our faith, but that we just kind of get involved in the moment, in the circumstance, and we kind of just allow circumstances to begin to override things that we've studied and prayed and been taught throughout our lives. And tonight, I just felt like the Holy Spirit wanted me to share with you and share with us uh, some truths for us not to forget. Now, in the scriptures, God tells us to remember. Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, he told the children of Israel, as you get ready to go into the promised land, when you get there, don't forget what I did for you. Don't forget, when you get there and get settled, don't forget all the things, all the power that you've seen, all the miracles that I worked that uh, were on your behalf, all the things that I did for you. Don't forget them. In fact, he says, rehearse them with your family. Remind your children and your children's children. Talk about them. Because he doesn't want us to forget those things. In fact, the Bible talks about, David talks about how I will remember the works of the Lord. I will meditate on his works. Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 1, he said, I want to stir up your minds to remember. I want to remind you of things. Paul told Timothy the same thing. So tonight, we're asking the Holy Spirit just to remind us. Remind us of some things that we already know, most of us, and things that uh, in this hour we need to keep in the forefronts of our minds because circumstances can be overwhelming if we're, if we're not careful. God doesn't want us to be overwhelmed. He wants us to have steadfast faith. He wants us to continue to trust him, to believe him. I know people around us are panicking. I know there's people in this world who don't have a faith or maybe their faith is weak and, and they're struggling right now with panic and anxiety and stress and all kinds of things. But listen, we need to remember that God has our answers. And so tonight, we're just going to talk about three things briefly. We're going to talk about, number one, how God wants us to remember that we are not alone. Now, here we are in a time that is unprecedented. We are practicing uh, social uh, distancing. I didn't even know the word or the term existed until a few days ago. So, you know, we're supposed to be six feet apart. One guy I saw on the internet uh, created his own little social distancing uh, apparatus, which was basically a big plastic donut that he wore around him, and it's, it was six feet either way. So anybody he bumped into, they were six feet away. Uh, we're living in times that are just different. Um, so now we're told not to gather in more than groups of 10. Uh, some places they're told not to leave your homes. If we're not careful, all of this distancing and all of this uh, quarantine will begin to turn into loneliness. It'll begin to turn into a spiritual problem where all of a sudden we begin to feel all alone. Some, some people live their life like that all the time anyway. And so now with all of these other things going on, it could be real simple, real easy for people to slip off and say, you know what, I'm by myself. 
But I want to remind you tonight from the scriptures that God teaches us that we are never alone when we serve him. That he's with us. He loves us. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 5, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is with us. And so tonight, I want to remind you, you are not by yourself. Remember what the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 10, verse number 41. He says, fear not, for I am with you. I am with you, he says. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will withhold you with my righteous right hand. Notice what God said to the prophet Isaiah. I am with you. Part of you, family, God's with you. He's with you right where you're at. Maybe you're in quarantine. Maybe you feel like I can't leave my house because I have a compromised immune system. Maybe maybe you're elderly and you're like, I don't want to get out. I don't want to take a chance. And we certainly understand that. But I want you to know, I want to remind you The Holy Spirit wants to remind you that you're not by yourself. You're not alone. God is with you. God is with you. He's on your side. In fact, I love Psalm 23 when we get to the middle of that psalm, verse number 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For why? You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You are not alone. But not only is God with you, listen, part of you family, even though we may not be able to gather, I want you to know that I'm with you in spirit. Other brothers and sisters are with you. And just to talk practically, if you're beginning to be overwhelmed by isolation or being overwhelmed by loneliness or quarantine, and listen, I would encourage you to pick up the phone and call somebody just to have a conversation, just to have a, a talk. Also, I would encourage some of you who maybe are not experiencing loneliness, but maybe the Holy Spirit would lay somebody on your mind, on your heart, and say, hey, why don't you call that person today? Why don't you just pick up the phone and give an encouraging word? Because you know what? Even if people don't always admit it, there are people who struggle with loneliness. And I can imagine in these times where all of this stuff is swirling around, we have daily updates from our president, We have all kinds of news media that, uh, uh, quite frankly, sometimes almost feels like their job is to freak us out. Um, You know, isolation, loneliness can kick in. So I want you to be reminded you're not alone. God is with you. You've got a church family that's with you. I'm sure you've got other family members that are with you. You've got neighbors that are there with you. So listen, if you're battling that, Don't let that overcome you. Let's let's work through that together. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to join us together and work through that together. Listen, the Bible says, when one rejoices, we all rejoice. When one weeps, we all weep. Listen, as the body of Christ, I want you to know that if you're going through uh, isolation and loneliness, that we want to be there with you. Listen, call me. Text me. I'll spend some time talking with you. I know we may be limited in some things that we can do, but that don't mean we have to stop. That doesn't mean we have to stop believing, stop trusting God. That doesn't mean we have to stop caring for one another. We can battle through this. Listen, the devil's a liar. Jesus has already overcome. He's overcome this thing called loneliness. And together we can get through that. So I want you to be reminded tonight that you are not alone. God is with you. And so are we. We're praying for you. Donna and I are praying for you. We love you. We care about you. Next, I want us to be reminded that God is our help. You know, I know we have a lot of smart people working on, on cures and test kits and manufacturing and all of these kind of things. And, and it, it, we, can, we could step back and we can look at governmental agencies and maybe we could criticize. But listen, I believe, I believe for the most part everybody's doing what they can. Now, has everything been perfect through this process? Probably not. Every great crisis, there's always things that we realize afterwards we should have done better. And so instead of criticizing, maybe it's time to look a little further for our help. Well, I'm thankful for what our government's trying to do and all the smart people trying to get vaccines around the world. Listen, our help comes from God. 
Our help comes from one that is greater than President Trump and greater than all the world leaders. Our help comes from the Lord. And listen, I know God has the answer. And so in the midst of this crisis, in the midst of these isolations and things being shut down and uh, you, you go out and, and you go to stores and, and quite frankly, you can tell people are not traveling like they used to. But listen, God's our help. He may use people. We agree with that. But God is the one who's going to bring the answer. And so tonight, I want you to be reminded that God is there for us. He is our help. Notice what the Bible says. Psalms 46, verse number 1 through 3. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I would classify a world pandemic as trouble. But notice what he says. God is our refuge and strength, very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. We won't trust the Lord. Even though the earth be removed and the mountains be ca carried into the midst of the sea, though, it is, though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. We're going to trust God. He is our helper. He is the one who's going to guide us. He's the one who's going to provide for us. He's the one who's going to bring the answers. And so tonight, I want you to be encouraged. The Lord's our help. The Lord is our help. Think about all the places in the Scripture where people were powerless. Think about when they got to the Red Sea. They didn't have the power to get through that Red Sea. They didn't have power to cross the Jordan River when it was overflowing. They didn't have the power to get through the walls of Jericho. They were limited in what they could do. We may be looking at this virus and other world diseases and think, wow, we're really limited. We don't really have an answer. And those things might be true. But this is what we know. God is our help. He wants to help us. And so the Bible says... If, if we need things, that's where prayer comes in. We go to God and we say, God, I can't do this by myself. God, we can't stop this epidemic by ourselves, this pandemic. But God, we're looking for your help. God, I may not have all the answers, but God, you do. I may not have the strength that I need, but God, you do. He is our help. And so I want to remind you tonight, that God wants to move in your heart and in your life. So practically, how does that work? Well, this is how it works. Take some time and put your faith in the Lord. How do we do that? How do we express faith to God? Prayer. Listen, I know it's real easy to get caught up in watching all the newscasts, you know, hearing all the stories hearing about how the disease has spread to this many people and how many new people's contracted and how many people are critical and how short the ventilators are and we can't get a test kit and we can't do that. What if we take a pause from all of that information and we just lift our eyes to the Lord and we say, God, would you help me? Remember Psalms 121? It says, our help comes from the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. Stop and pause, because that's an important phrase, that last phrase. The creator of heaven and earth. In fact, that phrase is found throughout the Psalms and other places in the Scripture. And why is that so important? Because the psalmist and the writers want us to remember that when we face a difficulty that's beyond us, we serve a God who created everything. When you go out tonight, if the, if the cloud cover allows you, there's no clouds in the sky, and you can look up, we can see the stars. We can see the moon. Tomorrow the sun's going to rise. We'll see the sun. We'll be able to see God's creation. And we can stop and remember and be reminded that the God we serve created all of this. And if he created the sun, the moon, the stars, and the earth, and everything that's in it, if he can, as the Bible says, number the stars and name them one by one, if he can do all of that, he can help us. He can help you tonight. Maybe you're watching and you're not feeling well and you're not sure if it's the coronavirus or just a common cold or maybe you've got some other sicknesses in your life or maybe some other situations as a result of, of job situations that are weighing heavy on your mind I want to encourage you tonight stop and let's take some time to pray let's put our faith in God and let's say God I don't have the answers because we don't but God you do so Lord would you help me would you strengthen me God would you touch my life would you Lord help me today because he's our help 
He is our help. He has the power. How else can we express that? Well, we can express that by living out our faith. God, you're going to help us. You see, our faith doesn't mean, uh, living out our faith doesn't mean that we have all the answers. It just means that we know the one who can change it. We know the one who can help us. We know the one who can minister to me. Jesus came to show us how much God cared about us. Because the biggest problem that we had that we couldn't help ourselves is that we were lost in sin. We needed a Savior. And God says, I can help you with that. Well, I've got some good news for you today. Not only can he help us with sin, forgive our sins and give us a brand new life, but he can help us through these difficult days. He can give us strength. He can give us peace. So practically, when we shut down in just a few moments from this Bible study, why don't you just turn off the TV? Don't go right back from Facebook to the TV. Just leave the TV off for a few moments. Maybe for the next five or ten minutes when we close our Bible study, just lift your eyes to the Lord and ask Him for His help. Then when you get done asking Him for His help, maybe spend another couple minutes just lifting your hands to Him and thanking Him for how He's already helping us. So we can express our faith through prayer, through worship, and just living and saying, okay, God, I don't have the answer, but I know you're going to work in my life. Next, I believe the Holy Spirit wanted us to be reminded that God is our peace. Now listen, fear and anxiety are real. And sometimes, if we're not careful, people that are suffering anxiety and fear, we can kind of be critical of. I don't know where you're at tonight. I know we're supposed to live in faith, but maybe you've got some fear creeping in. Maybe you've got some anxiety. Maybe you're being overwhelmed. Maybe all of this is just overtaking you and you're like, I don't know, Pastor. I don't know what I'm going to do. I want to remind you tonight that God's our peace. I want to remind you that God wants to touch your anxiety. He wants to touch your life. He wants to minister His peace. Peace that the Bible says is a supernatural thing. Remember what Jesus said? John chapter 14, he says, My peace I'm going to leave with you, not as the world gives. I'm going to give you a different kind of peace. Because sometimes what the world gives us is false peace. They give us false security. They give us false senses of hope. But the Bible says that God's peace is not like that. God can give us supernatural peace in the midst of a storm. Probably the best example I could give, and some of you have heard me say this, probably some of you heard me sort of say it more than once, is when Donna's dad passed away. We were in that room, and he'd been battling cancer, and uh, that night that he went home to be with the Lord or that evening, death is, death, death is a difficult thing. But that night when he took his last breath and departed this life and entered into being in the presence of the Lord, Something supernatural happened in that room. There was a handful of us in there, and the peace of God flooded that room. It was unexplainable. In fact, I haven't felt peace like that, that unique experience of just being overwhelmed with the peace of God. I don't think I've sensed that since. Now, I've had God's peace in my life, but that night was special. That night was supernatural. I can't explain it. It's a time when hearts are heavy. A loved one has departed this life. And even though we know that they're going to heaven still, we're left to grapple with life and death and those issues. But that night, the peace of God flooded that room and it was phenomenal. It was awesome. And so the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, with prayer, supplication, and with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, that peace that passes all understandings is real. I've experienced it. But that wasn't just for us. That wasn't just for Don and her family. That's for everybody. God wants to give us peace in the midst of our turmoil. Remember when Jesus, when they woke him up and he was, he was there and they Lord, don't you care that we're perishing? What did he do? He just got up and spoke peace. Well, he can speak peace to our lives. He can speak peace to us right now in the middle of this storm. 
Maybe you're feeling some fear and some anxiety, maybe some panic. Maybe, maybe you're wondering, listen, I went to the store two or three times and I can't get any bottled water. I can't get some essentials. Every time I go to the meat counter, there's no meat. Maybe there's a little bit of anxiety and panic starting to set in. I want to tell you something. God wants to give you his peace. So how did he say for us to get the peace? By everything, with prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. So in other words, we've got to go to God and we've got to ask for his help. And then God can give us his peace. I think it's Psalms 20, 29. Is it 29 or 27 where it says, The Lord will bless his people with peace. Did you hear that? The Lord will bless his people with peace. Remember that priestly blessing found in Numbers chapter 6 when, when God gave them instruction of how to bless the people? The Lord's going to lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. God wants to give peace. He wants to take our turmoil, our stress, our fear, our anxiety, our feelings of being overwhelmed, and he wants to replace them with a peace that passes all understanding. God wants to work in our hearts and in our lives. And so tonight, I know that God can give us peace. Notice what the scripture says. Isaiah, once again, says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah, the Lord, is everlasting strength couple things there that are very important as I read that scripture. Here's what they are. He will keep him in perfect peace. There is perfect peace. Perfect peace is not from this world. It's not from me. It's not any, from any human being. It's from God. But how do we get it? We've got to keep our mind on him. So once again, how can we practically live that out? I know that some of you are obsessed with watching the news channels. You watch it over and over and over and you hear every story and every angle and everything. Maybe, maybe instead of allowing all the newscasters, regardless of where you watch it at, maybe instead of allowing them to keep your mind occupied, maybe we should keep our mind on the Lord. Maybe we should focus on Him. Practically, why don't tomorrow, when you feel that urge to turn on the TV and see what the latest update is, and I'm all for being informed. But listen, I don't think it takes eight hours of watching the news to be informed on what's going on. So before maybe you turn that TV on, why don't you spend 15, 20 minutes just praising the Lord, just magnifying God, just thinking about meditating on the goodness of the Lord. Maybe, maybe open your Bible and get some peace scriptures together and uh, just, just start reading some scriptures about peace and strength and how God wants to work in our lives. And Let's keep our minds focused on him because this is what it says. He will keep us in perfect peace if we keep our mind on him. Now here's the second important part of this. Because he trusts in you. So this is what Isaiah, God speaking through Isaiah saying, listen, I'm going to give you peace if you keep your mind on me because you trust me. And that's what God wants us to do. He just wants us to trust him. Now, we've heard reports. I've seen reports. You've heard them too. Some people say this virus could last for 18 months. Some people said that schools could be out for eight weeks. Some people have said, well, you know, they're shutting this state down and we could be next. Hey, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what's going to happen in the next eight weeks. I don't know what's going to happen in the next 18 months. I don't know if the virus is going to die down through the summer, as some people predict, or if it's going to carry right on through the summer. I don't have a clue, but this is what I do know. God is in control, and I can put my faith in him, and I can have his peace. Because listen, regardless of what goes on in this world, our faith's got to be in the Lord. And so listen, maybe you're struggling with fear and panic. I'm certainly not here to judge you or to condemn you at all. What I would say to you is, let's ask God to help you. Let's ask God to help us deal with these crises, to deal with these struggles, to deal with fear and panic and distress and anxiety. We are living in a different time. You and I both know that. But we just need to ask God to help us. We just need to ask God to work in our hearts and our lives. And I believe he will do that. So tonight I want you to practically seek God for his peace. 
I want you just to ask the Lord, God, just help me have the peace, the peace that comes from you, not the peace of this world. Help me have the peace that passes my understanding. I can't explain it, but help me to do it. And I believe he'll do it. So those are the three things that the Holy Spirit just laid on my heart today for us to be reminded of. First of all, you are not alone. Next, you have a helper from God. And lastly, that we can have God's peace. Now listen, it's one thing to know these principles, to hear me talk about these scriptures, but we have to put them into practice. We have to, we have to exercise our faith. We have to get out and just say, okay, God, I need your help. I'm not alone. You're with me. Give me the reassurance of your presence. God, you're my help. I need your strength. God, help those who are in charge. We're looking to you for answers. God, give me peace. So we have to practically put these things into operation in our lives. It's not enough just to know them with head knowledge. We actually have to live them out. But this is what we know according to the Bible, that when we live out the word of God, God will help us. His word is true. He does not lie. And he will give us the assurance of his presence, the assurance of his help, and the peace that passes understanding. So tonight, I just don't want to pass on information to you. I actually want you to put these things in practice. Now here's another thing. And this is just something that's been on my heart through this whole process. I shared this last night um, in the video message, the video update, as well as the phone message that we sent and the text message that we sent to all of our Parkview family. This is a time when we need to help one another. We need to serve one another. We need, really need to be the church. You see, at this moment of time, God is helping us to see that the church is not a building. Now, sometimes we've known that. We should all know that. But sometimes we get trapped in that thinking that church only happens inside the four walls. Now, from this season, we're not even gathering inside the four walls. So now it's time to be the church the way we're supposed to be. So listen, pick up the phone tomorrow. Call somebody and encourage them. Drop a card in the mail. Send somebody a text. If you find out somebody's in need, if you can't physically do it, listen, call me. We'll get people to help if there's need situations. If you are elderly or compromised in your health and you need groceries and you don't feel like you can go to the grocery store or you're really, uh, you know, wanting to be really careful, I know we have people that love you and will help you buy some groceries. Take them to your house. We'll do that for you. We're, we're here to serve you. So let's practically serve one another. But let's not just keep that to our brothers and sisters in already in the body of Christ. Let's serve our neighbors. Let's serve our friends that are maybe not going to church right now. Let's serve people that are away from the Lord who don't really serve the Lord. And let's be light and love to them. Remember, remember I believe God really wants us to be that spirit-filled community that shares the love and the light of Christ in Newport News and beyond. Let's do that in this season. We have incredible opportunity to be the body of Christ. Let's do it. Let's do it with all of our heart. Let's serve one another. Let's serve our neighbors. Let's serve our community. Now listen, if you need assistance, I just want to remind you there's a couple of ways that you can get it from the church. Now we want to help you, but if, if, if you don't tell us that you need help, we can't help you. So here's some things. If you need assistance, you can contact me via the church office. Here's the number. It's 757-826-4512. Uh, some of you know that by heart. Some of you that are newer to the church, maybe you don't, you don't know that by heart, but here it is. Here's my personal cell phone. You can contact me directly if you need help. We're, we're want to be here to help you. 804-647-6071. Once again, 804-647-6071. Or if you can email, you can email me. Pastor Sweeney at parkviewcog.org. Listen, we're here to help you. We're here to serve you. We're thinking of creative ways just to continue to minister to one another, to serve one another. But listen, if you have a need, please do not hesitate to let us know. We want to be able to serve you. Now listen, as we uh, close tonight, 
I want us to close in prayer and let's ask God to help us in these areas that we're not alone, that he is our help, and that he is our peace. So right there in your kitchen, living room, wherever you're at, maybe you're by yourself, maybe you're around two or three other people, let's bow our heads and let's pray. And then once we get done praying, this is what I want us to do. Then I want us to lift our hands and magnify the Lord together. Let's pray. Father, thank you that we have this opportunity to continue to share with one another. Lord, it may not be what we're used to. It may not be what's normal. But God, you've given us the means and the ability to be together through the Internet. And Lord, I'm so thankful that we can connect and Lord, I pray that tonight as we've just looked at your word and reminded ourselves of some things in the scriptures, that Lord, you will just burn these in our hearts, that the Holy Spirit will keep us reminded of these things. God, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you would help all of us to remember that we are not alone. We are not by ourselves. You are with us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. In fact, you love us so much, you want to just comfort us and give us strength in this hour. So Lord, help us to be reminded. Help us to be reminded when things maybe get a little overwhelming or maybe we're, uh, we're not going out or we're quarantined or we're just trying to practice social distancing. And Lord, some of our relationships that we normally have, we're not having like we used to. God, I pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit that you would remind us that we're not by ourselves. God, I pray that you'd also remind us that our help comes from you. I appreciate what our leaders are doing. But God, our help in this crisis doesn't come from the White House. It doesn't come from the Capitol building. It doesn't come from research centers. Those people are all doing what they can, and we are thankful for them. Our help comes from the Lord. God, if you can just give those folks wisdom and insight, God, if you can just touch us and help us be reminded that you can help us, you can make a way where there seems to be no way, you can do miracles, Lord, as that old song says, so great. Lord, I pray that you would help us to keep our eyes on you while we are thankful for what everybody's doing around the world and those in our own nation and our own leadership. We, we're thankful for them. God, I want to keep my attention on you because when human efforts fall short, you never fall short. So God, help us to remember that our help comes from you. God, lastly, I pray for everybody watching live and everybody who will watch this video sometime later today or tomorrow. I pray, God, that right now you would begin to infuse our spirits with supernatural peace, perfect peace that comes from you, peace that causes us to say, wait, this peace isn't normal. It's peace that passes all understandings. God, I pray that you would allow us to experience that perfect peace. God, there's people watching tonight and they're anxious. They're uncertain. Some of them may be at the beginning stages of panic. But God, I'm asking you right now, through the power of the Holy Spirit, to touch them, to move upon them. And right now, as we're praying together, I'm asking God that you would give them the peace that passes all understanding. Now, Lord, we know you can do it and we thank you for it. Now, let's just lift our hands to the Lord and bless him. Father, we praise you tonight. We magnify you because you are the God who is able to help us. I give you glory, Lord, because there's none like you. Oh, Lord, you are great and you do miracles so great. We bless you, Lord. We praise you, God. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your word. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. I bless you tonight, Lord. I bless you tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just right there around your kitchen table, in your car. Let's just praise the Lord together. There in your living room, your den. God, we bless you. We praise you. We're going to make it, God. We're, we're going to make it. God, you're with us. You've not forsaken us. You're helping us. We give you praise for that, Lord. We magnify you. We bless your name. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise you, God. We praise you, God. You are so good to us. Well, don't forget to put these principles in practice, not just tonight, but tomorrow, throughout the rest of this week. Let me remind you, there are no activities here at the Parkview Church for the rest of this month. Everything has been postponed, canceled. Uh, there'll be things that we'll do later. There's some things that'll just be canceled for this month. We'll keep you up to date on those things. Also, remember Sunday when we go online on Facebook Live, it will not be at 1045. It will be at 11 o'clock. So we'll look for you then. Don't forget, we'll send out some reminders. Don't hesitate. Once again, if you need us, we want to serve you. We want to help you. So we're going to see you Sunday. Listen, don't hesitate to let us know if you need some help. We love you. Donna and I have been praying for you. We're thankful for God's grace and help in this hour. We want you to know that we're praying for you and that we love you. God bless you. I'll see you Sunday right here on Facebook Live.